Think I was your mother? Not kissing me like that. You mean your mother doesn't kiss you like that? Not since I married you. I'll have to talk to her about that when she gets home. <laughs> Where is she anyway? I don't know. She should have been home a couple of hours ago. Can I show you anything else? Well, I wouldn't worry about her. She's probably somewhere running her mouth. You know how you all get. B. Beverly. Earth to Beverly? Come in, Be Beverly. What's up, babe? Hey. I'm sorry. She should have been here by now. She's your mother, not your daughter. Nobody asked you anything. Nobody got to ask me nothing. I'm the man. I do all the talking around here. Okay, that's it. <laughs> oh, wait a <laughs> minute. Wait a it. minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're filthy. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go get showered. <laughs> How's the center coming? Uh, one more month and we'll be done. About time. Get these kids off the street. A lot of them been down there hanging around at the site. Oh, B, that reminds me. You should have seen big old Frank Lewis down there trying to chase some kids <laughs> away from the site today. That man must weigh 300 pounds. What is he doing chasing anybody? Exactly. Man's got a risk just getting out of bed in the morning. He down there trying to chase some 10-year-olds. <laughs> Vincent, that's not funny. That man could have hurt himself. Now, come on. If you'd have been there, you'd have been rolling. You should have seen him talking about, come on, pastor, and help me. Uh, get these little kids. Come on, pastor, stop laughing and help me. Come on, stop laughing and help the big, come on, help the big dude. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, B. She ain't coming no faster what you're looking for. What? Here's Sister Turner's grandson's in trouble again. Messing around with that drug dealer, Yousef. Yeah, I heard. Sister Turner called me at work today. Hmm. She wants to know if you can talk to him. <laughs> I'd be happy to talk to him. Just don't know what good it'll do. She just wants you to try, honey. These kids today don't want to listen to anybody. A dollar will turn their head faster than the word of God. Well, everyone else isn't a minister, Reverend Curejoy. These kids need your interaction, not a sermon. To them, the street is just, I don't know, real. And God isn't. I'm just saying. Mama, where have you been? I'm fine. How's everybody? <laughs> Just fine, Manny. At least someone has some manners around here, Vincent, and I didn't even birth you into the world. I don't know what got into this one. I did the best I could. Lord knows I did. <laughs> yeah, I know. She doesn't think God is real either. I didn't say that. Yes, you did. You anyway, said... Mama, why didn't you call and tell us you were going to be late? If I had known I'd have to report my comings and goings like a child, I would have stayed in my own house, burned out or not. You know we didn't mean it like that, Mama. We were just worried about you. Right, Vincent? Well, don't put me in that. That's you giving your mama a curfew. You always trying to be funny. You make me sick. Oh, don't be like don't that, baby. Don't come on, We play too much. <laughs> yeah, I just like a couple of kids. You gonna tell us where you were? Vincent, is your father still coming over to dinner? I don't know. I gotta call him. You know, she'll tell you when she's ready. I don't like you siding with her against me. You're wrong this time, B. She's my mother. Something is going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And whatever it is, it's my business. Goodness, I feel like I'm with, living with Martha Milhouse. Ouch! Mama! <laughs> Why don't you just tell her and get it over with? Reverend, if I want a divine opinion, I'll pray. Two weeks ago, my bus was robbed. What? Oh, my God. Are you okay? What happened? Yes, I'm okay. I, I didn't want you to worry. That's why I didn't say anything. So, why are you late today? I bought a gun. <laughs> oh. My. I'm sorry. Did you just say you bought a gun? It's only a 38. Oh, well, that's okay. Manny, look, just because you got robbed doesn't mean you need to go out and get a gun. You could get yourself killed. I could get myself killed without a gun. One's a little quicker. That's why I bought a gun. Having a gun is not the answer. Now, this is not what God wants for his children. God wants his children to get slaughtered in the street like those little punks. No, I just don't think God wants any 45-year-old punks out there either. And when we going to learn this ain't the old West? When all the Diabolos are dead. That's not funny. Now, all I hear around here is gunfire. People die every day protecting themselves. People die for not protecting themselves, too. Vincent, maybe she's right. Right? She's not right. People get a gun, they end up killing a family member or some innocent bystander. Now that gun's got to go. Well, maybe people will leave her alone if they think that she's, well... Strapped? Look, 
There's no need to fussing about it. I've got the gun and that's that. The fact is, I'm the one driving those streets day in and day out. I'm the one driving those streets. And any one of those people could be the devil himself and I wouldn't even know it. People are crazy today. This way, I can look the devil straight in the eye, knowing that if he takes a piece of me, I'll take a piece of him with me. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I don't think the Lord would frown on it either. The 23rd Psalm says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. It says nothing about I will fear no evil, because I'm strapped. Well, you can come on out of the pulpit now, Reverend, because she's got it. And there's nothing you can do about it. Vincent, call your father and see if he's still coming to dinner. Hello. Hmm. Of course, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll do whatever I can. Don't worry. Thanks. Dad's still coming over. It says he'll be here in a couple of hours. I ran into Martha Millhouse as I was coming in here today. I almost ran in here trying to get away from that woman. That's terrible, Mama. Terrible. I'm terrible. I seen you running away from her or else telling her a bald-faced <laughs> lie to get away from now, her. I have never told her a lie. <laughs> now, I may run in here, but I don't Don't be ashamed, honey. Don't be ashamed. <laughs> Ooh, that woman is the nosiest, most worrisome person I've ever met. And since she retired from that post office, she's even more worrisome than before. She was like that before she retired from the post office. I don't know how Mr. Millhouse deals with her. Now, see, y'all gonna keep on. You're gonna talk that woman up over here. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, let's mm -mm. shut up, honey. Not today. You know the Wrights got this little girl out here playing by herself and ain't nobody watching her? Maybe they know you're watching. Maybe they know you're watching. Leslie? Vincent, go in the car and get that turkey out for me, will you please? Man, come away from that window and go get that turkey for me. Ha, 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 ha.
I'll talk to him. That show was some good dinner. I keep hanging around here and I'm sure gonna gain some weight. You all right, Vincent? I guess this thing is hitting you kind of hard. What you looking at, son? You ever see demons, Dad? Demons? Demons. I froze. She was running right to me and I froze. I, I just stood there and watched that bullet rip through her face. That's when I saw the face of the shooter. I used to smile. Smiling because he killed something. Somebody. It all happened in a second, but it just keeps playing in my head, you know. I keep, I keep seeing those faces. They're my demons. So I sit here and I'm confronting my demons. And that's what I'm looking at. That's all I see. 
and son, you would have tried to save her and you both would have been shot. Yeah, well, better her than me, huh? Hi, Ms. Pure Joy. Sorry to bother you. I don't know if you remember me. I'm the I detective. I detective. We don't have to do this every time. No, Vincent, no. Now look, all I'm trying to say is, I mean, a bullet comes flying out the barrel of a gun, looking for a place to bury itself. Ain't got no name on it. It hit that little girl by accident. Uh, I guess that makes it all right. No, it don't make it all right. Is everything all right, Miss Purejoy? Everything's fine. Look, Vincent, I'm not trying to tell you how to feel or how to grieve. All I'm saying is I don't want you blaming yourself. You did all you could. I didn't do anything. You know, Miss Purejoy, you can't blame yourself. You have to understand, you're lucky to be alive. Lucky. Beverly? May I call you Beverly? Ma'am, is there anything you can tell me about the shooter? Anything at all? I should have done more. Well, what are you doing now? What? I mean, what are you prepared to do, son? I mean, the time to do something is before those bullets start flying for that little girl. I mean, all you're going to do now is get another ringside seat for the next one to get shot. What's going on upstairs, Miss Purejoy? Vincent. He's talking to his father. Should I... ask him some more questions? Maybe he forgot he some... He can't. I, I gotta do something. <laughs> well, what you gonna do? I don't know what to do. Sure you do. You wanna do something. Something that'll set you free. What do you want from me, huh? You want me to go out here and get a gun like Manny? You want me no. to, to find these guys, these kids, and kill them? You want me to tell you that's what I think I should do? That that's what I feel? Okay, I feel like killing the little punks. I feel like hunting them down and killing them like the animals they are. But yeah, I know that's wrong. It's not the Christian way to feel, but blood cries out for blood. I think you should go. But my soul cries out for forgiveness. These boys, they just act. They, they boys. In the same way I wanted to help Leslie, a part of me wants to help these boys. I mean, well, what do you do, huh? When you're trapped between, between vengeance and virtue. I don't know. So you tell me. Tell me what I should do. What are you prepared to do? I am prepared to sit here and keep watch. And I know what else to do. Son, when you decide to really do something, Let me know. Just let me know. He'll be all right. Just needs a little time.
all right? Amen. I, I don't, I don't know. together. Behold, I send you out as sheep among the wolves. Praise God. When you were little, I used to wonder how I would protect you from the world. I was all by myself. I was so scared. And you were so little. I never wanted you to feel any pain. I vowed I would destroy anything or anyone who would ever try to hurt you. I gotta go down. I have my cell phone if you need to get in touch with me. Look, man, how long is this gonna take? Why? What you gotta do? Well, some more than sit in front of this window all the time. You messing with drugs, Solomon? <sighs> Maybe. Did you know you can go to jail, stupid stuff like that? It don't matter. And anyway, I, I ain't going to prison. <laughs> yeah. You too smooth for that. That's right. Pretty soon they're going to find your smooth behind behind some smooth, shiny bars. Or better yet, face down in the gutter with a bullet hole smooth in the back of your head. Smooth. Man, what you know about the street? What you know about being face down in the gutter? You a joke. Sitting in front of your little window, man, you just watching TV. Solomon. Now let's all just calm down for a minute. Man, look at you. You so frustrated, you don't know what to do. You sitting in front of that window because you're too scared to do anything real. You so scared, you, you shaking inside. You shaking outside. Sideline niggas like you. Check that Always word Always talking about house. what we need to do as a people. 
We need to unite. Ain't no unity out there, man. People will kill you just for looking at them. You gotta pick a side. You don't, you die. What am I supposed to do? You supposed to choose God's side. Oh, God's side. Well, thank you, pastor. CB, I'm wasting my time with this one. The only side you choosing is suicide. You got to see you got to stand on your own. You want people to respect you. You won't stand for yourself. You won't stand for anything. And a man who stands for nothing will fall for anything. Like this line you feeding me. There are people dying, boy! And you want me to do what, man? What can I do? It's just me out there, preacher. Look, all this talk is great in church, but what's out there is what's really going on, and let's face it, I don't have a lot of options, you know. You could go to college. College? Now, why didn't I think of that before I could get a good job and work my way up through corporate America? College is for white folks. I went to college. Okay, white folks and preachers. You get the degree, Solomon, and you come back here to your neighborhood. You can help out some of your neighbors. You could be the one building us up instead of always tearing us down. Say, say I wanted to go to college. How would I pay for it? And if you were serious about going to college, I'm sure the people around here would help pay for it. I know I would. Help me. Yeah, it ain't easy, but we'll invest in you. You just gotta invest in yourself. You gotta get involved. <laughs> get involved. All this advice from Reverend Window Watcher. Ever since that little girl was shot, you've been in that window. Everybody know that. You in church talking about, I'll be watching. Don't nobody care. Don't nobody care about a man sitting watching from his window. You ain't stopping nothing. You just a sideline nigga like the rest of them. Then I suppose you frontline. You got that right. It is little frontline niggas like you that are killing us all. Niggas like you that are bringing us all down. I can't sleep at night because your little war took that little girl face off on my front lawn. Frontline? Nigga, I should kill you where you stand. Vincent. Look here, B. This here frontline nigga. Sonny Rodriguez was shot. There was another drive-by shooting and a stray bullet. Well, now you see, that's what I'm talking about. I am going to trust in the Lord. I done made up in my mind I'm going to trust In the love. In the Lord. I don't know about you tonight, I but I made God a promise. If you free my soul, I say in the mouth of my name. You know, you know I'm gonna love. I'm gonna keep on. Something has got to change. That's right. I'm gonna live, live. Something's got to change in the world today. In a world where children are gunning each other down.
Something's got to change. A world where even the most innocent, like little Sonny Rodriguez here, sentenced to death just, just for being in the way. Something's got to change. We come here today to bury another casualty of our own civil war. A civil war with no progressive agenda. A civil war that threatens to destroy us all. He was a child. Baby whose life has ended before it began. So we come to offer our, our condolences to the family. We come to pledge our tears. They will never be enough. Another void has been left. There's another crack in the black community. Something's got to change. Too many of our children are falling. Too much of our future is lost. Every day across this country, children are dying. The future is vanishing. Our communities are dry. And we do nothing at all. Well, I'm tired of watching. All we've been doing is watching. Every Sunday we come down to this church, fill these pews with our bodies, Fill the air with our shouts and songs. Songs they say. Songs they say we are soldiers in the army. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And meanwhile, those who are truly on the battlefield are little soldiers like Sonny, and, and they're dying every day. Something's got to change. We've got to change. We have to go from, from being sideline to being front line. We got to show the murderers of our children that we will no longer watch. We will no longer watch from our window. We will stand in the streets. We have to show them that we are soldiers in the army. And we have to fight. Although we have to cry. And we have to hold up. Blood stained banner. And we have to hold it up. Till we die. Amen. Amen. Him for my own sake. I'm going to see God.
You all right? Why does everybody keep asking me that? I'm just worried about you, Vincent. I'm fine. How's the family? About as well as can be expected. Ms. Rodriguez has been crying all day. I can just imagine how she feels. Hmm. Can you? Yes. I can. B. What? I buried another one today. We got to do something. I mean, Miss Rodriguez was sitting over there looking like she was wondering where all these people were before Sonny died. I had to agree with her. Agree? Yeah, somebody should have been there. We should have been there. And done what, Vincent? I don't know, something. Anything. I wish I had something better to tell you. I just want you to know I'm doing everything I can to try and make this I right. I know. You're doing your best. Have you, uh, heard from your ex-husband? Do you have anybody Anybody you can talk to? No. No one does. Not anymore. You didn't see the shooter. You can't save everybody, Vincent. But I can bury him? What kind of sense does that make? Two weeks ago, it was Leslie Wright. Right in front of my face. Today. Today is Sonny Rodriguez. Two kids, two weeks. And you couldn't save either one of them. Now, baby, look, you can't be everywhere. There was nothing you could do. See, that's where you're wrong. Now, there is something I can do. Something we can do. Like... I don't know. Evil's got to be confronted. We got to... Got to get in the face of this thing, you know? Get in the fight. We can't be sideline no more. We got to be frontline. You talking about going into the streets confronting drug dealers? Why not? Did it occur to you that they have guns and will shoot you down? Woman, I'm a child of God. I don't care. Bullets don't care whose child you are. They kill preachers and pagans alike. I ain't scared to die. You are really scaring me. Be every day these kids' lives are on the line. Every day! If there's something I can do to stop kids from dying, I'll do that. I agree with stopping the violence, but isn't there a better way? What is it? I, I can't think of one. Well, think harder. What you think I've been doing? You think I've been sitting here making my butt flat for nothing? I've been thinking, trying to figure out what I'm prepared to do. And you know what? I'm prepared to go out here and confront this evil head on. Head on? Yes! I'm, I'm trying to save these kids' lives. Don't you get it? I buried another one today. And if I don't do something today, I'll just be burying another one tomorrow now. And I can't do that, B. I just can't. And who will bury you? What? I will. I'll have to bury you. I don't want to have to bury you, Vincent. I love you. What do you think this would do to me? How can I live if you die?
solo man. You hurt my feelings. After all I done for you, you gonna get lost on me. Hey, 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 you're not gonna lie to me, are you? You know why I hate to be lied to. You know what? I don't even wanna know where you been. I just need to know I can still count on you. Can I count on you so low? Yeah. I hope so. Last time you let me down. You let me down in a major way. I had to take care of that situation myself. I don't like cleaning up behind nobody. I'm counting on you so low. You need to man up, okay? Okay. See, I told you this is my man right here, man, so low. Look here, man. Let me holler at you. I got a favor I need you to do. If we wasn't in Reverend Pure Joy's house, I'd tell you something. Martha. Man, would you leave me alone? What are they doing here? The church needs to be involved. I tell you, what, I'm a you mean you're going to ask these people to... <laughs> I've got to see this. I don't believe it. Y'all all right? You getting a divorce? Martha. What? What'd I say? Thank you, Mr. Millhouse. Nobody's getting a divorce. Now, I called this meeting because we buried little Sonny Rodriguez today. Well, we knew that. I hope you didn't call us Woman, over Woman, please. Man, leave me alone. Listen, please. And we can all agree we have a serious problem plaguing this community. At this rate, we're burying a child a week. What's on your mind, son? Now, I think we need to go out there and put a stop to it. Stop? Stop to what? All of it. Drugs, the gangs, the killings, all the stuff that's killing off our young people. Our old people, too, for that matter. That's right. You call the police, man. They don't even show up. The police don't live here. We do. The church cannot condone violence, son. You know that. In my day, I used to mix it up with the best of them. <laughs> What's all that about? Hey, I'm 64 years old now. I don't have no time to be messing around with some little thundercat out in the street, tussling and carrying on, messing around, have a stroke or something. I don't condone violence either. That's not what Solomon said. <laughs> the Bible says, that which is done in the dark shall be brought to the light. Now, maybe we need to shed some light on their darkness, you know? We can get video cameras and videotape drug deals. Yeah, and then we can take that evidence to the police. You see, you see, we expose them and they'll run like roaches. And shoot you while you stand. She's nosy, but I agree. I'm too young to die. Son, we appreciate your spirit, but you, you can't ask the people of the church to risk their lives for something like this. Risk their lives? And these are Christian people, right? <sighs> Anybody else see a problem with that? So everybody want to go to heaven. Don't nobody want to die. Right, okay. The boy done <laughs> gone crazy. I want the killing to stop. Baby, we all want the killing to stop. Exactly, but you can't ask the people of this church to put their lives at risk for a criminal element like this. It's an evil like any other. Come on now, it's worse than any other. Okay, but, but we dying anyway. Man, now we can just do nothing. Let the community die, or we can stand and fight. Huh? We take a stand right here, and our kids will live to adulthood. And we can all live with ourselves. Um, I appreciate your, 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 
enthusiasm, son, but realistic. Realistically, communities clean themselves up all the time. Come on. I think I speak on behalf of the church, the officers here, when I say I can't, we cannot sanction the use of the congregation for something like this. I'm sorry, baby, but I think Cleo's right. And I ain't getting shot for nobody. And if you were smart, you'd get rid of that crazy notion. Son. Son. Well, I guess we better be getting on. Y'all are welcome to stay for dinner. Oh, well, thank you. We'd be delighted. No, we can't afford to stay because if we stay any longer, Martha drive everybody to drink. What? Clark, if we wasn't at Reverend Pure Joy's house, I would tell you something. You're just trying to be nosy because if you worked that hard at the post office, you'd be postmaster general. Ooh. They said no. They're scared. Can you blame them? Yeah. Yeah, I can. They're Christians. Should be raised to die for what's right. Jesus was. These people aren't Jesus. Okay, uh, Martin Luther King. They aren't Martin Luther King Martin either. Martin Luther King wasn't Martin Luther King until he decided he was ready to risk his life for his ideals. That's when he became unstoppable. That's when the world changed. That's all I want. I just want the world to change. Vincent, these are just ordinary people, and you can't expect them to be more than that. Being ordinary doesn't equal coward. Coward? If they won't stand so lives can be saved, then they cowards. Period. You know I don't agree with you, right? Are you calling me a coward too? Yeah. What? What, B? What you want me to do? If you won't see that this thing needs to be stopped, that we're the only ones who can stop oh, it, I don't believe you want to stay inside afraid to confront it and hope it'll go away? Well, you a coward too. Well, Moses, without the church backing you up, what can we expect see, from you? See, I ain't you? scared. I'll go out there by myself if I have to. Now you sound like a fool. Well, which is better, the fool who gets things done or the coward who does nothing? Well, only the coward lives to answer that. The coward's already dead, don't you see? No, I if don't. If I'm so afraid to die that I do nothing, then I'm dead already. You want to die? No, I don't want to die. I don't want nobody to shoot me or anything. But I figure if I make this neighborhood safer, better for these kids, maybe it's worth it. Maybe I'll live forever. And once you die... Where does that leave me, huh? Look, we're talking like we know I'm gonna get killed. I have no intention. No one intends to die, they just do. And when you die, where does that leave me? Here to carry on the fight. Vincent, do you love me? People who love their families just don't go out and risk their lives. They're already on the line, don't you see? I'm just choosing to put my life to better use. Anything else is selfish. Them people at the church, my father and all of them, they're hypocrites. Want to talk Christ but won't pick up the cross. And I can't be like that. I just can't. They aren't hypocrites. They aren't cowards. They're just people. Just ordinary people. Who are watching children die. Don't you get it? I buried another one today. I looked into the face of the second child to die in two weeks for doing nothing. They died for nothing. I don't want to die. But if I die, you let it be for something. You let it be for something so these kids ain't got to die for nothing. Vincent. Please. If we do nothing, then we're already dead. If the dead will do nothing to save the living, then the living must do something to save the dead. Now this, this is one nice house. You're one heck of a housekeeper. And decorator. I had a little help with both. Yeah, I imagine you did. What do you do for a living, if you don't mind me asking? Not at all. Self-employed. 
self-employed. I love that. Hey, I always wanted to work for myself, you know, make my own hours and all that stuff. Just never really could figure out what to do. Any suggestions? You have to know what your passion is. You see, most people live sad lives because they don't know what their passion is. You know what they can do. Passion. Now, you see, when you say passion, I think you mean anger, rage, you know, the kind of thing that would make a man commit murder, shoot up city blocks, kill some kids, you know what I mean? Sound like you've been a detective too long. Yeah, you're probably right. See, problem is I, I think everybody looks like a criminal. Take you for instance, and I look at you with all your fancy clothes, all this, all this stuff. And I say, now that guy, that's a drug dealer. What exactly can I do for you, detective? Just wondering if uh, you've seen these people around before. people in this neighborhood. Well, uh, these people, they aren't in this neighborhood anymore. They're dead. That's a shame. Really hope you catch who's responsible. Oh, I will. You can count on it. See, we've got a pretty good witness. Just following up on couple leads. See, guys like this, they think they're smarter than they really are. But they always slip up. And when he does, I'm going to be there. Feel safe already. Cops just left her. Bring me Solomon. Not today, Detective. Today's not good. I need your help. No one in this neighborhood will talk to me. Everyone acts like they're afraid or something. Neighborhood's grieving. Come back tomorrow. Today's not good. One more day for this guy to be on the street. Not if you catch him. What do you think I'm trying to do? Not today, detective. Look, no offense, but get off my property. Manny, I think what I'm looking for is in that house. Wait here. I'll get it for you. I 
I need to know I can count on you, Solomon. I asked you to do one favor. Got the police at my house telling me they got a witness. Now, you know I would never hurt you, don't you? Come on, man, you gotta believe that. We like family. Haven't I always took care of you and your grandmother? Now listen, you know I got this reputation for being this monster. The real me, it's not like that at all. This is business, Solo. Sometimes business get nasty. Sometimes you gotta hurt people or they'll hurt you. Understand what I mean? Got a girlfriend, Solomon? No. Remember when I was a little older than you? I had a girlfriend. Man, she was something. Supposed to be a boy. The son. They died. Some medical, whatever, never could understand what it was. But what it boiled down to was money. I couldn't have her. I couldn't have my son. Because I didn't have money. The day they died changed my life. Listen, a broke man is the lowest thing in the world. I vowed I was going to get paid and have a son. Got the money. You like my son. Play your cards right, man. You can have all of this. Now you let me down before. I let that slide. I need this one solo. You're not gonna let me down twice, are you? You can count on me, Yusuf. I knew it. Look, I know it's been hard for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the preacher, too. Got to be tough. To be showing some real strength. And I'll go forget you for that. Count on that. What do you want me to do? Nothing. You'll be all right.
Bev, Bev, wake up, baby. Things are finally turning around. I showed some deals I taped to the police, and they closed that crack house two blocks over. You should see it. So it's over? Over? <laughs> we just getting started. We got to run it now. Running. Vincent, they just gonna move somewhere else. I don't be so negative. See, now people can see I ain't crazy. God's on my side. I bet they gonna want to get involved now. Mm -hmm. Wait till Martha Millhouse gets Vincent, to running her mouth. How long do you intend to keep this up? <laughs> Until all the Diablos are dead. That's not funny. Oh, come on, baby. I'm building this neighborhood back up. Using bricks from this marriage. What's that supposed to mean? You're out all hours of the night with this video camera taping God knows what. Every night I'm at home praying that you make it home safe. Every night. I'm trying to get used to the fact that you might not and I can't do this anymore. So what you seeing? Huh? What are you saying? Is Solomon. Hey, Solomon, what can we do for you? Came to speak to you, Reverend. Vincent! Hey, now, this about that little pop in the eye. I was just about to apologize. It ain't about that. I'm here to kill you, Reverend. Okay. Okay! Solomon, put the gun down. I gotta do this. Then do what you gotta do. Are you crazy? Solomon, listen to me. This is the most important moment of your life. What you got here is a choice. You see it? Life or death. Heaven or hell. Choice. Solomon, listen to me. Be please. Please what? Think about your grandmother. What's this gonna do to her? You're breaking her heart. Come on, man. Don't tickle the trigger. You either pull it or put it down. Mama! Lord knows I don't want to kill anybody, but I will. Put that gun down and get on out of here. Manny, put that away. He put his away, I put mine away. Things ain't working out quite like you planned, huh, son? It's okay, son. Hey, right now you okay. But you pull that trigger, and in an instant, ain't no coming back. No. Manny, Manny, y'all left the door open. Oh, Lord. Uh, uh, uh. Good God. Uh, Seems uh, like we're in the wrong house. Let's me. get out of uh, here. Come on, Clark. Let's go. Come on. Well, what you gonna do, man, huh? You gonna have to do something. Thought you were stronger than this. Man, I ain't no punk. You ain't no punk. Come on, come on. This make you feel tough, huh? That gun make you feel like a man? The young brothers always think it come from the outside. You want to be a man, you put that gun down, you choose life. It's easy to throw your life away. It's hard to preserve it. What choice I got? It's just me and Grandma. She's trying to take care of me. Solomon. You changed my life, man. You showed me that what I was doing at that window was nothing. I'm frontline because of you. I put my walk with my talk. Now you want to change things for you and your grandmother, you got to do the same thing. Look, you pull that trigger and your life is over. Your grandmother's life is over. How long do you think she gonna live with a broken heart? Choice, Solomon. Heaven or hell? Life or death? Now, you choose life, and I 
help you get your life back on track. Now, that's a better situation for you and your grandma. You choose death. I'll be your welcome mat to hell. Congratulations, boy. You chose life. You chose life. Tell me I'm crazy, huh? Tell me I'm crazy. He brought a gun in this house. He chose life, that's what he did. He brought a gun in this house. So what? Man, he's got one. He came in this house to kill you. That boy wasn't gonna kill nobody. You don't think he could have killed you? I was more worried about Manny coming out there looking like Dirty Harriet. Freeze! Vincent, I'm serious. <laughs> Look, if he was gonna kill me, he'd have done it already. I don't know why you think you're invincible all of a sudden. He's seen the face of death. Yeah, yeah, I faced the face of death. I don't care what he faced. We can't have people waltzing in and out of here pointing guns at us. He is okay. No, it's not okay. Look, I tried to be supportive. This is getting really silly. I want you to stop it and stop it now. B, God is working overtime. What's he talking about? I can feel Jesus. his protecting arms around Jesus. me right now. Death came right into this house, right into this living room, tried to take me and couldn't. We even turned his servant into a Christian. I didn't hear him say he was going to church next Sunday. Not yet, Manny. Not yet. But that boy put that gun down and chose life. Now, that's the start if I ever saw one. One thing about death is it never quits. It came for you once, it'll come again. Let him come. Yeah. Come, death. Come for me. Wear that same smile you wore for Leslie Wright. This Wear that smile for me. You can try, but you can't hold me. Death shall have no dominion. Death shall have no dominion! Why didn't you two come forward with information earlier? I ain't getting shot from nobody. What Martha means is we were so scared we didn't know what to do. No, what I mean is I ain't getting shot for nobody. These are your neighbors. Didn't you realize someone might get killed? I know they're my neighbors, and I love them like family. And if that had been my real family, I would have done the exact same thing. Shoot, love is one thing. Bullets is quite another. And like I said before, I ain't getting shot for nobody. Hey, look, can you write in there that I don't know this woman? That I've never seen her? I'm not even with her? I'm on my own? What are you saying? Give me the witness protection program or something. Oh, you just I need to TV. just hush him. Shut up, fool. Relax. Relax. I'm just looking for some answers, You're lying right? to that man. Sick what? Now, what do you really know about the pure joys? Oh, they're the salt of the earth. I mean the salt of the earth. Nicest people you ever want to meet. You met him? Yes, but really I'm just looking for your impressions. Crazy. Clark, you a mess. You need to quit now. I'm not quitting. They've been crazy, though, ever since they hit the block. Crazy before they hit the block. <laughs> but now you have to admit, Manny's all right. But that Beverly, whew, can't stand her. Always putting us out of her house. 
she doesn't have any respect for her elders. Little old upstart. That's well, Martha, what she if you is. could keep your big mouth shut, maybe we could visit Who people got sometime. Big, what? You just talk nonstop oh, around my the clock, around the block, all the time, like you. It ain't everything. my fault. It is your fault. I've been Folks, nice to those people because I know nowhere. how to be. Now, what about Vincent Purejoy? Crazy. Crazy. Ever tell you how much your father was like Vincent? He had the same fire, the same bull head. <laughs> I don't know who's more stubborn. Your father was a cause man too. He was always off to some march or demonstration. Always talking about the white man this and the white man that. <laughs> he sure was a sexy man. I didn't really appreciate him when he was alive. Didn't get his point or his purpose until after he was dead. <laughs> Better late than never, that's what he would say. As long as you get the point, you'll never miss the point. <laughs> never really knew what that meant. Hmm? I never knew what the hell he was talking about half the time. I just love to hear him talk. I just loved him. Still do, I suppose. Like you love Vincent. Beverly, listen to me, sweetheart. You've got to forgive him. I know it's not easy right now, but you have to, for your own good. You have to let go and let God. Forgive. And let go. This fear, this pain, it's the devil's hole, baby. Vincent made a positive change in this neighborhood. He'll live forever around here. Celebrate that. That's what I had to do for your father. I realized he was just being what he was supposed to be. It's their purpose. Forgive him. It's what Vincent wants. What about what I want? Hi, Cleo, come on in. How you doing? Uh, well as can be expected. How's Beverly? She's a mess. Well, maybe I should talk to her. Yes, I think she'd enjoy a visit from you. Excuse me, ma'am, but you're the finest woman I've ever seen in my life. Are you married? Yes. Yes, I am. Is he bigger than me? About the same. <laughs> Not nearly as cute, though. <laughs> Does that mean you'll let me have his dance? Yeah. Just don't tell my husband. <laughs> <laughs>
took my gun back today. Couldn't keep it after all this happened. I know what you mean. So how you doing? Oh, I'm all right. I'm fine. It's Beverly I'm worried about. She's up there now in that attic, at that window. She did the same thing after that boy left here with that gun. <laughs> she didn't speak to Vincent for a week after that. Then they made up. Hey, Charlie, what you got? Do I have a surprise for you, or do I have a surprise for you? Now that's a surprise. Man, I've been looking for this guy. How'd you find him? We caught him trying to break into the church. <laughs> Breaking in? Right. All right. Let's go see if we can find out. All right. Solomon Jennings, man, I've been looking for you all day. I didn't know better. I'd think you were ducking me. You're not ducking me, are you, Solomon? I'm sorry. Where are my manners? You want something to drink? Yeah. What, like a soda or something? Let me ask you something, Solomon. You got something against God? Or is it just Reverend Pure Joy? Let's start with Leslie Wright. Did you know the little girl? Her family? I don't know who shot her. That wasn't the question. Really? Let me explain how this works. I ask you a question. You answer it the best you can. I think we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's start over. Did you know that little girl or her family? Not really. I I knew her from the neighborhood, but I never babysat anything. Now see, answers like that, just gonna get you on my bad side. All that time you spent in the window, you'd think we didn't have a whole house. That looks like Reverend Pure Joy out there. Well, call the newspaper, those scoop meal houses struck again. I should have married a better man. A better woman would have. I think I'm gonna go over there and see if they are right. Let that be the reason. I don't have a lot of time to play with you, boy. So I'm gonna give it to you straight. I think you're my shooter. Now I wanna know why. Shoot him, man! I ain't shoot nobody! Don't hand me that crap! 
Admit it now and make it easier later. You got it all wrong. I was trying to help Reverend Pure Joy clean up the neighborhood. How? By pointing a gun at him? Breaking into his church? Don't lie to me! I ain't lying! You're just not listening! Okay, Solomon, tell me. I'm all ears. If you ain't the shooter, who is? Hi. Hi. I mean, it's been a while since we had a date. Yeah, it's been quite a while. You still mad? A little bit. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. <laughs> Go to dinner. I'll get the car. You come on out. We'll go to dinner. You and me. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's <laughs> go. I'm sorry. What? Now you can't talk. Cat got your tongue, huh? Well, you know, I've been asking questions all day. And all I've been getting is stonewall. Everyone acting like they're afraid of something. Well, now you are going to tell me something. I'm sick and tired of this. This is Leslie Wright, sweet little girl. Five years old. She goes out to play one day, and she doesn't realize she's never coming home to mama again. She's never gonna see her sixth birthday. You destroyed more than one life that day, Solomon. Her mother doesn't know if she can go on. But what do you care, right? You like that? You'll love this. Look at that! Look at the damn pics! You did it! You ought to be proud of yourself. What I can't figure out is if this shootout is in retaliation of the first one or what. Unless you say it's the same gun, though. And I'm betting it's your gun. Your gun, Solomon. I got it from Manny Miller today. Oh, yeah. And when the report comes back that says that your gun did this? I got you, Solomon. Oh no! Oh my god! What, is that it? You still sticking with that story? I didn't do it! I didn't! You didn't! I want a lawyer! Well, that's music to my ears! What innocent man ever needed a lawyer? You little bastard! I am innocent! I didn't kill those people! You went into this preacher's house with the gun, with the intent to kill! Tell me I'm wrong! That's how I got the gun! Yeah, I went there! But I didn't kill nobody! I, I chose life! You chose life in prison! That's what you Calm chose! Down. Calm you down. Do it Calm down! You killed two Pull a gun on a preacher man in his own home! You are going to burn! You're twisting it all up! Reverend Pierjoy told me that I could do better, that I could get out. I mean, he's good people. He's good people. He's good people. You mean was good people! That's it! Reverend Pierjoy is dead! It wasn't me! It was Yusef. Sorry about the preacher, too. Back. Remember me, Lord. Re
Beverly. Come on. Beverly. 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 You got it all wrong. You don't know Yusef. He's mean. I mean, he talks to me real nice, but he's not. He really hurts people. I did some running for him, and he gave me money. You delivered drugs. I never looked. I never asked. He gave me the package and the address, and later I get paid. I guess I thought it was my only way. I mean, Grandma wasn't bringing in enough money to support us, really, and she knew I had a delivery job, but she assumed it was groceries. I never corrected her. Yusef knew I wanted to move up. He told me he paid me $5,000 to kill Reverend Pure Joy. I went to the house to do it, but I ain't never done nothing like that before. I thought it would be easier. I mean, I was mad at him for hitting me in my face before, but... I couldn't do it. There was so much going on there. But the big thing was Reverend Pure Joy, though. He said he wanted to help me. Really help me. He told me I had a choice. I ain't never had a choice before. How did Yusuf feel about you not killing the Reverend? He wasn't happy about it. He wasn't happy at all, but... Told me I could make it up to him. Said that he would find a way. I was scared, so I, I kind of avoided him. Meanwhile, I started hanging out with Reverend Pure Joy, and he showed me all kind of history and like where I came from and how many people died for me. Then I realized, you know, maybe I, I could do better. Maybe I could go to college and stuff. He was the greatest person I ever knew. Then why did you break into his church? Reverend Pure Joy was taping everything. He was making it harder on Yusef because I think he got Yusef on some of the tapes. He was taping so much that you guys wouldn't be able to ignore the problem anymore. Yusef wanted me to get the tapes, the camera, everything. And he knew no one would say anything because Miss Wright was scared to death and Miss Pure Joy had gone crazy. I guess he wanted me to get the tapes so I wouldn't say anything. Your boy is taking his time. See, that's your problem lack patience. He'll be here. Did you believe the kid's story or not? Not sure. Hey, you think I was over the top in there? <laughs> it worked, right? Right. Let's find you, sir. for curling, ain't it? You took the most important thing in my life. Woman, you crazy. I didn't take anything that belongs to you. Now you and the rest of the His congregation... His name was Vincent Pure Joy. He was my husband. My life's breath. And you took him. May God have mercy on your soul. I don't know what you're talking about. Can anybody here tell me what this woman's talking about? I saw you. I saw your face. I 
I know you. Be very careful. You all better be very careful. I forgive you, but you cannot operate here anymore. It's time for you to leave right now. You telling me where I can go? Woman, I'm a grown man. You can't shoot us all. You cannot kill us all. I shoot you. And the rest of these trespassers. Don't do this, baby. We'll run home. Not like this. In the honor of Vincent, in the name of Jesus, we love you in the Lord, but you got to go. In the honor of Vincent, in the name of Jesus, we love you in the Lord, but you got to go. In the, in the honor, honor of, of Vincent, Vincent. In, in the name, name of Jesus, Jesus we, we love you in the Lord, but you've got to go. In the honor of Vincent, in the name of Jesus, we love you in the Lord, but you've got to go. In the honor of Vincent, in the name of Jesus, we love you in the Lord, but you've got to go. In the honor of Vincent, in the name of Jesus, we love you in the Lord, but you got to go. In the honor of Vincent, in the name of Jesus, we love you in the Lord, but you got to go. In the honor of Vincent, have you ever lost them? In the name of Jesus, we love you in the Lord. We just want our children. You got to go. Our family. In the honor of Vincent. In the, in the name, name of Jesus, we love you in the Lord, but you got to go. In the, in the honor of Vincent, in the name of Jesus, we love you in the Lord, but you got to go. In the honor of Vincent, in the name of Jesus, we love you in the Lord, but you got to go. In the honor of Vincent, in the name of Jesus, we love you in the Lord, but you got to go. In the honor of Vincent, in the name of Jesus, we love you in the Lord, but you got to go. In the honor of Vincent, in the name of Jesus, we love you. I should have been with you from the God knows we would have made a winning team. Now that you're gone, I must find the strength to carry on your dream. But today, I'm looking back with watery that he will come through there's always someone
Bye. 